On this week's Xarin Show, I have my best friend Steven on, and he's going to tell us all about the state layout in Xamarin Community Toolkit. Tune in. Welcome back to the Xamarin Show. I'm your host, Gerald, and today I have on the show my best friend in the entire universe. It's Steven, and if I talk loud enough, you can probably hear me through his microphone because he lives very close, just, just right over there. Um, hello, my friend. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. Thank you. I am fantastic. But let's talk about you. You might know Stephen from um, his beautiful UIs. He does a lot of things with the UI things, right? He writes a lot of beautiful blogs, does a whole bunch of things with um, contributing to the Xamarin Community Toolkit, because that's why we're here. Um, and actually, I think today you're going to talk about state layout, right? That is entirely correct. Shall we explain what it is? Yes, go right ahead, because let's, I think let's you, it just started. Dive right in. Yes, let's, let's do that. Uh, because it started like um, something, a library of yours, right? It was then known as State Squid. Yes, that is correct. It uh, it started out way back when as a library um, because I actually I, I had a need for it myself. Most open source projects start like that, I suppose. Um, best and the best ones do, at least. So what, what it essentially, uh, if, if you want to boil it down to its essentials, it's um, when you open an app or you create an app, a single screen with a list or something like that, it's it's going to have a lot of different states, right? The list might not have data, so that's an empty state. It might be loading data, so that's a loading state. Um, and what you would typically do in an MVVM world is maybe make Booleans for all of these states, like is loading, um, is empty, all that kind of stuff. And it just clutters up your view models in my opinion, at least. So I set out to create something that was a bit more elegant, if you if you will. And that was that's what State Squid at the time became. Um, and when the, the Xamarin Community Toolkit was rebuilt, or at least repurposed into what it is now, um, I think that was the, the ideal moment where I thought, OK, instead of me having to manage this on my own, maybe I can contribute it. Um, and it becomes part of this bigger ecosystem, right? So. Yeah, That's where so we are that now. is also what the, the Xamarin Community Toolkit is, right? Because we are trying to combine like all these cool things, new controls, all the converters, all the behaviors, all the things. Uh, but also, you know, we can share the load with a little bit of development of libraries that are already out there. So, you know, a lot of library maintainers might feel like, oh, I have to maintain this thing. I built it once, I needed it. But now loads of issues are coming in. Um, so, you know, we are happy to talk to you and see if we can fit it into the Xamarin Community Toolkit and share that, well, burden, you know, it's it's something fun, it's open source, but we can share the effort of um, uh, maintaining it and uh, together with that, putting it into our awesome package. So um, what we did is also take this package and we rebranded it a little bit to state layout. Um, and I think you have something to show us um, to yes, what it's all about, is, right? That is entirely correct. We can pull up a demo. And basically, where where you start off is you include our awesome Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, you can see that I did it here through the actual exact namespace. I think there's currently also a way that you can import the entire thing in one go. So you yep. don't have all these separate declarations here. So that's very awesome. Um, but I still need to update this app. So what it is, basically, it is a collection of attached properties, a few of which you can see right here in action. Um, so on every kind of layout, be it a grid, a stack layout, whatever you come up with, um, you can make that piece of layout state aware. So what it's doing here is it's binding it to a state variable that's somewhere in my uh, view model. And it also has um, like a, a bit of support for custom states. So we have some of them out of the box. I will show those later. Um, but you can also write your own and it's basically a, a string variable, and you can name it anything. So th th there's infinite options for, for custom states. Um, and moving on from that, what you then do is you define state views, which is a view that is shown when a specific state is triggered. 
Um, so this one, for example, is on the loading state, which is also templatable. So you can make a template out of this and reuse it everywhere where you need the same kind of loading state. Um, you can repeat them. So if you have one single thing, like in a, in a list, for example, if you have one item, you might want to repeat that three times if you want to do something like a skeleton loader. Um, and yeah, we just go through all of these states. Um, and when in the view model, the correct state is triggered, it shows the one that you've defined right here. Basically. Exactly. So the things that I'm seeing here is loading, empty, error, and one custom thing. So yes. this is basically like one control. It just a it, it says it in the name. It's a state machine, if you will. So you just flip it around and you say, hey, right now I'm loading the data. So you show a state which has you know a view that kind of shows a skeleton loader to to show uh, indicate to the user that it's loading. Uh, and whenever the loading is done and there are no items, you switch to the empty state and it shows a message that hey there are no results right so you can flip around between those states um, to to show a different thing basically yeah if we quickly take a look at the at the view model um i've ha i have here the actual method that does all that triggering so this is the refresh method um when it has no internet access it sets a custom state um with the string ad identifier offline um when we start we are loading then we do some loading code. Uh, if it gives back a null, we're assuming we are on error. So we show that state. On exception, we also show error. And in the finally, if we're not in an error state, um, depending on whether or not we have items, we have an empty state or we have the none state, which is basically the initial state of the view, um, which is in this case, if you look at, if we collapse this right here, all these state views, everything that's contained within this grid except for the state views, that is the, the non state, so the default state, basically. Right. So in this so case, then it will actually, yeah. basically not show the state layout. Any, it will show nothing of the state layout, but all the rest that's in there, basically. Yes, that is correct. Very cool, very cool. Uh, so, so if can we, oh, sorry, go right ahead. <laughs> if we want to see it in action, I'm sure you were going to ask the same thing. So yes. <laughs> let's, let's just see that in action, right? So what I did here is I kind of hacked my way around to refreshing this on push of the add button, which is not entirely correct. But so if we click on the add button, what we see here is the loading state. Um, I added some custom skeleton loader type things. And what we said earlier, like the repeat count three, um, you could see that it is actually showing three items. And that is one definition of a single item. That's what's in that template. Um, so if we go to look that up real quick, and that is that kind of skeleton loader with a shimmer effect and all the things, right? That's the thing that you mentioned before. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did here is basically I defined a layout, which is a grid with, with a few rows. Um, some have a different column span, so that makes them a bit different or sort of randomized in, in the eyes of the user. And it's the, the three labels uh, on top of one another that you see right here on screen. And that is then repeated three times, which is this, this data template, basically. So that, that basically creates that effect. And if you go into, for example, settings here, I have the same thing on this uh, on this logo up here, which refreshes the user info. And yeah, like I said, you can you can put in basically any view into that state view. So there's there's literally endless options of what you could display in all these different states. Um, yeah, very if we look at if we look at the empty state, for example, you have typically a label that says there's nothing here and maybe a, a nice graphic on top of it. You can all put that in in a state view and load yeah, exactly. It in. It's fully customizable. You can basically put any views in there, arrange them any type, uh, any way you want, and uh, you know just yeah. make it fit your design, right? Uh, yes. Really cool. So this app is the uh, MVP app, if I'm not mistaken, that you're working on. Uh, so that is completely open source and is actually using uh, parts of the Xamarin Community Toolkit, including his own state layout. Um, so we will link that thing in the show notes so you can find it. Um, also, of course, all the other things that you can find uh, about the Xamarin Community Toolkit, the repo, you can access at aka.ms slash XCT. Um, Stephen, thank you so very much for coming on this show, explaining You're all about the state layout, and um, I'll think I'll see you for an next episode. We will. See you later. See you later. <laughs>